So now that I've got my quad mesh inserted into Fusion here, I can now begin converting this into a T-spline, which gives me a lot more editing capabilities. So up here, I'm going to hit the Create Form, which would then jump me into the Sculpt environment. You can see the software is warning me that I'm going to the Sculpt environment. Under Utilities here, that I do have a Convert. It's asking what type of conversion do I want to do? Or do I want to do a T-spline to B-rep, B-rep to T-spline, or quad mesh to T-splines? And that's what we want to do in this case. That's what we have. We have a quad mesh. So it basically just wants me to pick the body. Do I want to create a new body? It's really the only option here. That's fine. I'll go ahead and say OK. And now you can see that I have converted that. And pretty much all of the edges there roughly came over to being edges here in, in my T-spline body. You can see I still have the original quad mesh in the browser I can turn off or on if I needed to. So now that I've got the conversion, I can start editing this like it's any T-spline. So what I can do here is maybe I want to, since this object is symmetrical, maybe I'll kind of just cut down to one arm and then I'll use some mirrors and duplicates to get the right shape here. So let's kind of take a quick look at that. I'm going to delete some of these faces. Now I've gone and deleted basically all but one quarter of my, of the drone. And I've got a few faces here that quite didn't get, uh, you know, maybe got deleted by accident. I can recreate those fairly easily here. So I'm going to kind of walk through kind of cleaning up this and then basically using the mirror duplicate to kind of create the entire drone again. So just bear with me here. I'm going to use my edit form and grab this edge. Use alt drag to kind of bring this face out. Just bring this edge out. Looks good enough there. And then I could use something like weld vertices to kind of just connect this one to this one. Zoom in here and get these two connected again. And then I have some other areas just like that here. So I got these edges that I need to bring out. So using again, using Alt and dragging this will add additional faces, which I'm basically missing at this point. I kind of get it close and then I use weld vertices to connect it in and it will blend it in with the rest of the face then. Let's see, I get really close here to make sure I get the right ones. I have some similar situations over here as well. Now that I have all of those issues resolved, I do want to kind of try to make sure that I am kind of lined up with the origin so I can then use those planes as my mirror duplicate planes. So I'm going to go here as I'm going to kind of double click on this edge. I can use the flatten command to say that I want to flatten to one of those origin planes. And if I needed to, let's say select plane here. If I needed to, I could use the edit form to kind of position myself so I was close to the origin planes uh, the way I needed to. But when I brought it in, I told it to center it up. So I got it pretty close, pretty close centered for me already. And I'll double click this edge here, use flatten again. I want to 
I'll use this plane as my plane to flatten to. I will say sometimes I get like little weird ripples because of the quantity of edges that I have here. But you can also recognize that you've, we've got a lot of edges here, probably more than we need. It's not a big deal to delete some. And actually, if I kind of double click on one edge, it will kind of select the entire edge. And just hitting delete will get rid of those edges, which will then the, um, kind of try to smooth to the rest of the shape. So I'm actually going to delete these two loops of edges. And I could probably do this multiple times. It's just a matter of how many, especially on this arm, I think there's way too many. I think I'd be inclined to delete at least every other one, if not more. And I'm just kind of double clicking to select the loop, then hitting delete on the keyboard to get rid of those. And you can see I'm kind of cleaning up the shape a little bit uh, that way as well by getting rid of those. There's a lot of work here to do, so it's just a matter of taking your time and kind of understanding what the workflow is and how to uh, correct that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to build my symmetry back into it. I'm going to go to symmetry here. I'm going to use the mirror-duplicate. I'm going to pick the T-spline body. I want to use this as, say, my mirror plane. And that's why I flattened to it, because that way it would touch, and it would then build that symmetry there. And I repeat that process to create the back half of the drone. Mirror-duplicate, this body, this plane. That looks pretty good. And obviously I have a lot more work to do, but the great thing about this is with the symmetry, I can work on one quadrant and it will update the other two as well. So I don't really have to, to really improve do that much more work because I really only have to really hone in one quadrant. But just to kind of prove the, the kind of the ending process here, if I say finish form, once I finish my form, you can see here that it actually, I lucked out that it actually turned into a solid. I've seen a, a few cases where the body isn't quite right. There's a few errors and it'll say, well, I can't convert the solid. Is that okay? Or kind of highlight the errors. So it's just a matter of kind of working through those. So um, hopefully this workflow kind of makes sense and it, you can leverage that to kind of improve what you're doing right now. But I just thought, thought this was a great process to go, be able to go from photographs all the way to a solid model, which obviously this isn't, wouldn't be my finished product. I'd keep refining it, but I don't, uh, I don't think you need to see all three hours worth of work to kind of get the idea of what the workflow is.